a thread by Carlos Osuita. People have to educate themselves. Donald Trump will be reelected in spite of all the doomsday scenarios. Cleos Bowl tweets at Carlos, it seems their present ploy is to muddy the election process and results sufficiently to void a Trump win. Gotta believe the populace is far too aware of reality for such an overt move to do anything but delay the inevitable. Carlos responds, people who should know better are telling you that the vote count will go on for months or years. No, the election results must be certified by both houses of Congress on January 6th, 2021, after the new Congress is sworn in. The GOP will take the House and hold the Senate. There's absolutely no doubt. The writer buries the lead here from Inquirer.com, Inside Pennsylvania's Political Realignment, and How Republicans Are Winning It. Here's what he says. Trump's in trouble. Everybody hates him. He sucks. But he has a possible, faint, almost insignificant ghost of a chance because, drum roll, registration shifts across the state show Republicans gaining voters at five times the rate of Democrats. Tis a flesh wound. Well, it's actually <laughs> game over. The end. Curtains. Nobody who votes for Trump is going to vote for the Democrats. The whole point of voting for Trump is that the Democrats must be demolished in order for us to be free. So, the GOP will take the House and hold the Senate, guaranteed. In the unlikely event that the Senate rejects Trump as president, the House has the authority to choose the president. The GOP-run House will choose Trump. Bush versus Gore was decided before the de January 6th deadline, and Florida was preparing to choose new electors and give the state to Bush. In a very real sense, the presidential election doesn't matter. If the Democrats make it impossible for the votes to be counted, and if the two GOP-run houses of Congress can't agree on who won the election, the GOP-run house chooses Trump. That's all she wrote. Nancy Pelosi doesn't become president or choose the president. A presidential race must be determined on January 6th, 2021. Vote counting and lawsuits are irrelevant. Everyone talking about them is wasting your time. California has made an emergency call for large venues to handle in-person voting. What does that tell you? The press is not sentient. Jim Acosta thinks that this is outrageous, Acosta tweets. Before news conf, Trump was caught on a hot mic telling people at a club, you'll get to meet the fake news tonight. You'll get to see what I have to go through. Who's there? Oh, all my killers are there. Wow, you'll get to see some of the people we deal with every day. That's what he thinks is outrageous. Acosta brags about being a turd, but then he bitches when Trump says to sane people, Acosta is a turd. The problem is that Acosta is disoriented. From news.illinois.edu, journalists' Twitter use shows them talking within smaller bubbles. Quote, Beltway journalism may be even more insular than previously thought, say study authors Nikki Usher and Yiman Margaret, mm, raising additional concerns about vulnerability to groupthink and blind spots. It's not that I don't talk to leftists. They don't talk to me. All they do is insult me, tell me to kill myself, send me death threats, and ignore the substance of what I'm saying. If they do address my points, they deliberately distort them in order to try and put me on the defensive and make me have to restate everything all over again. Not a single leftist ever engages me in good faith. They can't help feeling volcanic rage at my very presence. In the last four years, I haven't heard one valid leftist position. They even lie when they're telling the truth. Trump inherited Obama's economy. True. It was in another downward spiral. 
Monthly job creation was dwindling steadily. Trump turned it around. He took Obama's jalopy of an economy, repaired it, and then modified it into a Ferrari. I won't engage people who aren't speaking to me in good faith. Period. The Democrats just fell into another one of Trump's tiger pits. From APNews.com, Trump extends unemployment benefits, defers payroll tax. Here's how the Associated Press reframes what happened. Quote, the president's step back from talks with Congress breaks with his self-assured negotiating skills, would reinforce the view that the president, who took the office declaring he was a dealmaker, was unable to steer the process to an agreement. End quote. Nobody outside of Washington thinks that. Literally nobody sane thinks that Nancy Pelosi is reasonable and that Trump failed. The voters understand perfectly that the Democrats are deliberately trying to tank the economy. More hilarity. Quote, Friday's jobs report, though it beat expectations, was smaller than the past two months. End quote. It was 1.8 million jobs in one month. Obama's last month in office, he created 140,000 jobs. Trump inherited a crappy economy. It took a full term to fix it. Let me give you a military illustration of what Trump is doing. Weapons designers have absolutely nothing to do with soldiers. It's still like that. Soldiers are given weapons, they test them, and the whole system is discarded. One of the more Recent examples is the XM-25 Counter Defilade Target Engagement CTDE system, a 25 millimeter automatic grenade launcher that used programmable rounds. They'd create airbursts over hidden enemies and kill them. It never worked. Approved by Obama, scrapped by Trump. Only one military commander in history had the brains to solve this problem that still plagues us today. Major Bernard Redeman, commander of the World War I Flamethrower Regiment. The modern flamethrower was invented by a mechanical engineer named Richard Fiedler, who was trying to build a paint sprayer. He convinced the German army to adopt his Model 1912, which was ridiculous. It had a rigid lance, on a swivel joint. To use it, you got your assistant to unhook it from the clasp and lower it, and then you opened a block valve after an assistant turned a dial on the side to pressurize the oil. It didn't work. The Germans withdrew it from service. Redemann was a firefighter. He went to Berlin and explained that if you replaced the rigid lance with a shorter lance connected to the flame tour by a rubber hose, you'd have a super effective weapon. He demonstrated it personally, and they hired him as commander of a newly created flamethrower arm. The German crown prince was pretty much the only guy who saw the effectiveness of flamethrowers, so he put Redemann's headquarters at his army headquarters. Redemann had a workshop company at the crown prince's army headquarters, there were standing orders that fighting men of any rank could come to Redeman's headquarters with recommendations for modifications or for completely new weapons. The workshop com company would carry out the modification or make the new weapon often on the same day. Since there was also a testing company of combat veterans at the headquarters, the improvements of new weapons were tested immediately. If the modifications and weapons worked, Redeman told the Crown Prince, who personally bankrolled the changes. The Crown Prince would bypass the entire German military bureaucracy, personally ordering that the changes go into mass production. If things got too slow, he fired everybody. This is how German flamethrowers continually improved throughout the war. Nobody has ever done things this way. But Trump is pretty much following in Redeman's footsteps. Unemployment is now down to 10%. Obama got to 10%. Here are his yearly averages. 2009, 8.3. 2010, 9.8. 2011, 9.0. 2012, 9.1. 2013, 9.1. 2014, 9.1. 2015, 9.1. 2016, 9.1. 2017, 9.1. 2018, 9.1. 2019, 9.1. 2
2012, 8.3. The excuse given is that no president could overcome the job losses of the subprime mortgage crisis. Trump could have. He's overcoming the pandemic and the Democratic governors and the Democrats in Congress. Trump is listening to the economic equivalent of combat soldiers. Obama never did, not even once. People want Trump to be reelected. The Democrats can't prevent it, no matter what they try. Those are incontrovertible facts.